What's up guys? Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on video for you. So in today's video, we're going to check out the newest version of Scatter for Blender, Scatter 5. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the new version of Scatter 5 is finally out. It brings a whole bunch of new features as well as improvements to the existing features. Um, first off, this version has now been updated to work at Blender 3.0. So this is the official release for working with Blender 3.0. And so what it's done is it's given us the ability to use the assets, um, not only using the biomes like we have before, which we can talk about in a second, but also to use the asset manager for all of our assets. And it's set up so that it's really easy to do. You just go to edit, preferences, and then in your add-ons folder under scatter five, you wanna go down to the manager button right here. Then when you click on that, there's a preferences location. You can use the preferences location to set where your asset library is down under your library path. And then once you do that, all of the assets for scatter are gonna show up in your asset library. So now you can see if I wanted to bring these in individually, I can just drag them in. So the entire library of high quality plants that come along with this are now found inside of the asset manager. So you can bring in whatever plants you want and look at them as well as being able to scatter them as well. So you could either select a box like this one or select a plane like this one. So you would just select it using the scatter five window. You would select the plane. You would select a scatter type, which we've talked about in previous videos, but then you would either select the assets in your scene that you want to scatter. Then you could use the drop down here for selected objects and you can scatter that object on your surface. Or alternatively, you don't even need to bring the objects into your scene. You can also use selected assets. So let's say that I was to go through and select a couple of these grass types like this in my asset browser. Well, now I can just click on the button for scatter assets and it's going to scatter those objects inside my scene. And so notice how what this has done is this has basically created two different systems. So our first system has the plants in here that we had selected. The second system gets added with the objects that we had inside of the asset browser. So now you can use the asset browser in order to quickly select the objects that you want to scatter inside of your scene. So, and then all of the same options down below still exist along with a number more. So you could do things like changing the seed for the random rotation down below. You could also set your own. You could also set things like random scale. So for example, let's say I wanted these to be larger or smaller. Notice how I can adjust the seed in here. Or you could also adjust the random factor in here by using the sliders as well. So all of those options are in here and they apply to the scatter libraries that are down below. And so this also still retains the ability to use biomes. So let's say for example that we wanted to select this surface right here and instead of picking our own assets what we could do is first off we're going to select another preset. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and select maybe this one right here. But then you can just go to the biome library as well. And so you can either use some of the preset biome libraries that are in here and notice how there's a ton of them, right? Bushes, forests, grass, um, all of these come along with this version of Scatter 5. And so you can install different biome libraries as well. So like Grass Blade and Gardener are going to contain um, like grass additional detailed grass biomes or, or gardener contains a library of uh, realistic looking bushes and shrubs and hedges, but you can use all of those and bring those into your library for use. But in this case, what I want to do is I just want to select one of the biomes here. So maybe I'll select, maybe I'll select this wasteland option right here, but you can just click on this and it's going to automatically import those objects into your scene and scatter them using your scatter preset. So when this comes in, and it's going to take a while because it's bringing in a lot of geometry. If we were to zoom in and look at this, notice this has brought in a detailed biome of different collections of plants in here. So it's got like flowers and grass and weeds and other things in order for you to quickly be able to create this realistic looking nature scene inside of Blender. And if you do render these out, and so if you render these, notice that they render really realistically, right? So it's got this very high quality asset library along with the ability to interface with those other asset libraries as well. So this tool is a great tool for doing any kind of scattering or trying to create these realistic views like this. And so another thing that I like about this is now 
under your um, creation settings, there's an option in here under on creation where you can tell this what to do when you import all of this, right? Because remember when I brought this in, it loaded all of these different plants in and it scattered them across the surface like this. But let's say that I wanted to scatter some things on this surface, but I didn't want it to scatter all over everywhere. Well, what you can do is you can go down to the on creation setting and under on creation there's an option here for paint v group density mask basically what that means is that means that when you create your new scatter system so i'm just going to pick a biome right here instead of it scattering it everywhere what it's going to do instead is it's going to scatter things where you paint so let's say i pick this grass 09 right here so notice what that does is that automatically puts me in um, in vertex paint mode or weight paint mode. Well now, what I can do is I can click and drag in here and it's only gonna scatter those plants where I click and drag. So instead of it creating that, surf that system everywhere, it's gonna give me the ability to automatically paint or directly go into paint mode when I first start. And so notice how it is scattering all of this grass and it's doing a great job of it, but it's not just putting it everywhere on this surface. So another cool thing that's in this version is if you were to scroll down, Notice how there's an option in here for wind. And by the way, there's a ton of stuff in here. Um, I highly recommend that you go check out the documentation, which I will link to in the notes down below. Um, there's quite possibly the best documentation I've seen for a Blender add-on um, on this documentation page that talks you through everything that this can do. So make sure you go check that out. I'll link to it in the notes down below. But one of the cool things that's been added in this version is if you go down, there's an option here for wind. So basically what it does is it goes through and it tilts your particles that are created in here. So in this case, your, your grass, and it's going to procedurally tilt them to simulate wind. So if I was to click the play button in here, notice how it's taking my taller weeds and it's moving them back and forth as if the wind was blowing. So on some of the taller objects, like this, you're now able to simulate wind directly inside of this add-on without having to do any kind of manual animation or anything like that. So another th cool thing that I like in this version is there's a function in here called cull near objects. And basically what that does is it'll actually remove objects based on their proximity to another object that you select. So for example, you can see how when you set up the cull near object under your proximity, what that's gonna do is that's gonna remove the grass in a certain area around your objects. So you can use this in order to more quickly add detail and make things look like there's actually been traffic around them by removing the scattered objects. So there's also some very advanced settings in here. So things like affinity, which basically allows you to set your scatter system to be attracted to another scatter system. So basically what you can do is you can set what it's attracted to and arrange. And then what that's going to do is that's going to actually set up your scatter system so that they show more objects being scattered around other objects. So again, very, very advanced stuff. Like I said, the, the feature the, the number of features in this add-on is just crazy. So we may look into some of these in more of like an individual video, but just go to the documentation page and just kind of flip through these and just get kind of an idea of what's available. It's super cool what they've done with this add-on. So that's just kind of an overview of some of the cool features contained inside of the newest version of Scatter. You can download that by following the link on this page to find it in the Blender market. Um, I am gonna be doing more tutorials on some of these features in the future, so I'd love to hear from you what you'd like to see more of. I'll also link to some more scatter tutorials on this page. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.